If you work in video production, you'd be forgiven for not having heard of or not having paid that much attention yet to 32-bit float audio recording. When hearing the term for the first time, especially if you aren't actually that familiar with audio, at worst, let's be honest, it sounds boring. And at best, it sounds like an incremental upgrade in audio quality. We can already record 16 and 24-bit audio on pretty much every product, including in cameras. And 32-bit just sounds that little bit better, perhaps. Well, regular 32-bit recording is just a little bit better. But 32-bit float is something entirely different and something that, in my opinion, every single person that has to record sound as part of their workflow would benefit from knowing about. So let me show you what it is and why I think it is so, so important. This is a clip recorded normally in 24-bit on the Zoom H6. So it's a very high quality audio recording. In the first third, I've set my levels normally and then I turn them right down so you can pretty much, you can't hear it at all. And then I turn them right up. So all you get is clipping and distortion. Let's have a listen. So this is recorded on the Zoom H6 using 24-bit audio. This is a normal level with the gain slider set to five. I've now turned the gain dial all the way up to 10. So this should be very loud and probably clipping quite a lot. Then let's try and correct this. So bring everything to roughly the same level and have a listen again. So this is recorded on the Zoom H6 using 24-bit audio. This is a normal level with the gain slider set to five. I've now turned the gain dial down to one. So this should be recorded very quietly. And I've now turned the gain dial all the way up to 10. So this should be very loud and probably clipping quite a lot. So it doesn't sound good. Obviously, this is a very extreme example, but this is what happens when you mess up your audio levels this badly with a normal audio format. But let's now change to 32-bit float and do the exact same extreme test in the exact same way, set to the exact same levels. Let's listen to it first before I then change anything in post. And now this is the same thing in a 32-bit float recording. So I've got my levels set to 0 dB. And I've now turned them all the way up to 60 dB. Okay, so it sounds very similar, but let's now add some gain to the quiet bit and take some off the clip bit, just like we did with the previous file. And you can tell just from the waveform as we do this, that something already different is happening. And let's take a little listen. And now this is the same thing in a 32-bit float recording. So I've got my levels set to zero dB. I've turned them all the way down to minus 60 dB this time. And I've now turned them all the way up to 60 dB. So it sounds perfect. Not only is it possible to correct mistakes like this, but it actually sounds better with a cleaner noise floor. Even the bit where we've added lots of gain to get the volume up from practically nothing. And this is all because of 32-bit float audio. As you can tell, it makes a huge, huge difference but what's actually going on here? Well, it's all about dynamic range. So 16-bit audio clips at 0 dB and it records down to minus 96 dB. 24-bit also clips at 0, but goes down to minus 144 dB. Now, 32-bit float, on the other hand, is very different. First of all, it goes down to minus 758 dB, which would already make a huge, huge difference but then it also doesn't clip at zero anymore. It can go up to plus 770 dB, which gives 32-bit audio a ridiculously huge dynamic range. Now this is far more audio dynamic range than we will 
ever need in actual audio recording. In fact, there's actually nothing you can record on Earth that would, would need that dynamic range. I mean, the difference in volume between a scientific and echoic chamber with complete silence and then a massive shock wave is roughly 210 dB, while 32-bit flow audio gives us a dynamic range of 1,528 dB. So it's safe to say that that is as much dynamic range as anyone will really ever need. It is worth a quick mention though, just to say that because the file can record that dynamic range, it doesn't mean that every other piece of the chain is able to like the dynamic range from the microphone that you're using, for example. So you might still run into dynamic range issues like hearing some noise floor when you boost quiet audio up, but to be honest, it is very unlikely in real world situations, especially if you're using a high quality microphone in the first place. So, 32-bit audio isn't brand new. It's been around for a few years, and in products like Zoom's F2 and F6 recorders, Tentacle Sync's Track E recorder, and the Sound Devices Mix Pre 2 series for at least a year or so by now. But it's only really got to the point where these products are actually readily available in stock, and it's only been relatively recently that 32-bit float files have actually been easy to work with in normal video workflows. When these products first launched, you kind of had to be working in proper audio programs like Audition or Isotope RX to be able to take advantage of the extra information. And this is still, of course, the best workflow if you want to do that. But the files are now supported in Final Cut, Resolve, and Premiere Pro, which makes fitting them into any video workflow just so, so much easier. Just like with any external audio files, you can just sync them up with waveform or with timecode, and both are very fast and easy to do. And then all you have to do is raise or lower the volume of the clip as needed. It is as simple as that. So to me, this is something that everyone who makes videos professionally should know about. And I know that is a big, big statement. But these products aren't hugely expensive at all, but they will make a significant difference to one, how good your audio sounds in the first place, and two, to how often you actually make mistakes in audio recording. And to me, 32-bit audio is all about that peace of mind. You can use this in a corporate interview and know that it's always recording your levels perfectly. No more asking what they had for breakfast in order to sneakily check your sound levels or anything like that. It just doesn't matter anymore. In fact, on half of these products, you can't even set your audio levels because it just does not matter. And imagine shooting a wedding, for example, and having a bunch of these recording the audio. It's gonna give you so much more control over the audio in your edit with barely any extra effort on the day. Put one of these on the groom, for example, and you're gonna have that full peace of mind that it will pick up the bride next to him no matter how softly or loudly they speak. I just think it has so much potential to really change the way that we handle audio recording at all levels of the video industry. But what do you think? Is 32-bit float audio something that you can see yourself using? Let us know down in the comment section below. We're gonna be taking a closer look at each of these new products we sell, which can record 32-bit float audio as well in a series of future videos. So keep an eye out for those. But the links to these products are of course down below to head over to proav.co.uk. But for now, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.